Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hello, one and all. Welcome back to The Artist Matters. I'm your host, Alex Rudy. Back with you. Bringing another artist to you. And I uh, just want to do a nice shout out to a previous guest, Rodini Almanasi. As I said, I think in the last episode, I reached out to him to design my business cards for The Artist Matters. And they arrived Friday. They came out so awesome. Check out the video I posted on the Facebook page and on my Instagram account. They look awesome, and I can't wait to use them when I go to conventions or craft fairs or any place that there's any possibility of meeting an artist. I'm going to give them my business card and hopefully make a new guest. So let's get into it with this week's guest. His name is James T. Ellison. He is an illustrator hailing from the lovely state of Kentucky. This is someone who's always had an act for drawing, and in many ways, we are a lot alike. At a young age, he was drawing on anything he could. Placemats at restaurants. Uh, yeah, I was kind of guilty of that. If the, if the creative urge struck me and crayons were around or something... And there was a blank piece of paper. It was game on. I can relate. Anyway, he um, has been at it for a while and went to Northern Kentucky University for graphic design. Dabbled in that a little bit. And he hit the comic book convention circuit, craft festivals to showcase his work. He's even created posters for a local bar, logos for small businesses, t-shirt designs, and lots more. And more than anything, he would really like to uh, use his art in the great world of comic books and graphic novels. But definitely one of the unique things about James's story is that he suffers from a chronic autoimmune disease, which you'll hear more about in the episode. And he wants to bring awareness about it and speak about it, which this is, of course, a good form for that. And some of it has helped inspire him for uh, some future stories that he's looking to do to spread awareness of this disease and bring hope to those. You can live with it, and it just makes his illustrations that much more meaningful to him, that he can still do this. It's not crippling him in any way from drawing and designing and illustrating. It's a very great story and I'm so glad he was on the show to share this story and hopefully inspire others who suffer from this disease to see that you can still live and have a functional life and create. So without further ado, let's get into it and hear my little chat with James T. Ellison. All right, we're here with James. Welcome to the show. Hi. Yes, he hails all the way from? Covington, Kentucky, which is right across the street, or river, if you will, from Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> wow, that's really close, huh? Yeah. All right. So did you always have this creative spark in you? Um, yeah, I have memories as early as, uh, I'd say, like five or six, sitting on my, my grandmother's lap in church, uh, drawing like Batman and Superman on the back of like whatever pamphlet they had at the, at the pew. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been drawing on and off, like basically as long as I can remember. Um, and then in high school I started taking it more seriously, like doing more art classes as electives and, uh, going into college from there, um, and pursuing it and 
kind of not really knowing what I wanted to do. Like I, I went into college for graphic design and quickly realized that that's not what I want. Um, and I kept trying to tell myself like, well, we'll just do this to get to the, the degree and um, kind of move from there and see what, see what comes of it. And uh, I don't know, I kind of got derailed by life um, and mm-hmm. left, left college to work a full-time job and uh, fast forwarding a lot of time to <laughs> present. I've, you know, been slowly getting back to my artist roots and pursuing that and trying to make something of that instead of wasting what I feel like wasting my life at a day job. <laughs> I understand that. So backpedaling to your youth, was it sure. always was it always illustration that you had your creative outlet or is it anything else? Mainly, yeah. Like I was just drawing. It seems like it's been centered around comic books and <laughs> not for any real reason. Like my parents didn't co- collect comics. Like I didn't have any influence other than just knowing those characters existed. Uh, I don't know. It's a weird, like subconscious plant in my head of like these characters exist, and I gravitated towards them. Um, Batman and Superman were a big part of my life. Spider Man, I think, is a part of everyone's life um, <laughs> when they're growing up. But uh, yeah, I was always just drawing like you know, stick figures <laughs> claiming that they were these characters. <laughs> Is this an early age? How, how, how far back do you remember? Um, I, I want to say like five, five, six is about the time that I can really start recording those memories and remembering mm-hmm. them. So did illustration just come to you? I guess. I mean... I don't know. It, yes and no, because I feel like it's been more of a development over the years than it has been just like, boom, this is it. You know, I, I would say being an artist has always been there because my dad's pretty artsy. Um, he he can draw. He can he doesn't really do much with it, but he he can draw. He can build things out of wood. He can craft things out of leather. Like. My dad's very like artistic, and um, I'm fairly confident that's where I get those genes from, mm. is my dad's side. Uh, and I guess my like path of least resistance has just been drawing, um, and then just doing illustrations and wanting to wanting to take that somewhere, whether it be uh, like illustrating a book or doing my own comic. Uh, that's something that I'm pretty passionate about, but also very afraid to start doing <laughs> well, of course it's a big step yeah um, so i'm guessing family was encouraging of your art yes you have your yeah mm-hmm. and do you have siblings i don't no. just only me child. myself and i yes yeah i was an only child for 12 years but did you carry a, a sketch pad with you everywhere you went sometimes uh i would say like in high school i did a mm-hmm. lot and um like, as a child, I just drew on whatever I could find. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, if we were, went to a restaurant, I'd flip the placemat over and crayon sketch on the back of that. I low-key still do that today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, if the creative spark hits you, you got to answer the yeah. call, right? Yeah, for sure. Were there any um, early influences that you think made you drawn to illustration? Besides the comic books, obviously, they were... Really yeah, I mean, nothing nothing really, like, at a young age, I feel like, that I can remember uh, drew me to anything specifically. But as I got older, there were different, like, comic artists, like Jim Lee, or... Mm-hmm. Um, Jim Lee's the one that's sticking out the most right now, yeah, but that's just artwork. the Batman phase, yeah. His artwork. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then some more like I don't want to say contemporary because they're still pretty relevant, but also they weren't around that long. Was like Ryan Otley and uh, mm-hmm. various other artists today, um, and then the like, YouTube artists. Like we're in that era. Like I'm I'm young enough to where the internet played a big part in my life uh, at like young adulthood, which I'm still a young adult, but still. Um, 
I'm watching watching YouTube videos and like artists putting up their stuff online and not even really knowing who they are, you know, just like un, untitled artists who kind of like influenced me and friends friends around me that are artists have kind of influenced me and pushed me in a direction of like, okay, if they're doing it, then I could be doing it, you know, mm. or I should be doing it. <laughs> That's good to have that encouragement. Did you create your own comic book characters? I haven't yet. No? No. I, uh, I've always wanted to. I do have... I guess I shouldn't say I haven't. Because I do have some stories and characters in my head. I just haven't put on paper. It's just like a fear. Like, I want it to be a good story. Mm. So I don't want it to be my first story. Uh, I want to do some, like, test stories first, if you will. Like... <laughs> Like some, uh, I don't know, another story I have in my head is with my dog and my cat, actually. I wanted to, it's super silly, but um, The Adventures of Daisy and Lancelot. Hey. I just tell <laughs> tell the story from their perspective. Very, like, um, Life of Pets, mm-hmm. kind of, like that movie. Mm-hmm. Very, very similar to that, where, like, the adults leave the room, and then the animals come to life, mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Um, I'd like to explore that and just sharpen my storytelling skills because the the story I really want to tell um, is pretty close to my chest and uh, it has to do with the autoimmune disease that I have and uh, the main character kind of suffers from it uh, but I don't want it to be the main plot of the story it's more like a subplot it's in the background the readers see it but they don't really they're like what what's going on and then you know, over time, I want to develop and kind of shed light on that issue. Get to that. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, yeah. So let's go to Northern Kentucky University. How right was on. their art program? Uh, it was good. I enjoyed. I enjoyed the time that I spent there. Um, previously to NKU, I went to a uh, an like a yeah it was a private art school downtown called Antonelli College I did I did a year there part time so it felt like it took forever <laughs> um and I did a lot of like cartoon classes there and um I did some like 3D and just a lot of drawing classes at the the private school and then when I went to NKU I had to restart <laughs> because oh. none of the credits transferred uh, of course. with it being a private school yeah mm. it was it was like my inexperience of understanding the way colleges work and uh it is what it is but NKU's art program is really good uh for like a smaller school i mean they're getting bigger now but when i was there it was fairly small and um for what it was it was a good art program i enjoyed the classes i took um took a lot of like just basic stuff like drawing one and two and uh, i took 2d and i took a i think i took painting um stuff like that you know you're just general Mm -hmm. art classes to get you in the window but it was good and you got your degree i didn't no i uh i yeah i walked away from college um i forget how old i was maybe 21 or 22. I walked away pretty early. I got, I actually, I got married at 21 and, uh, she was in school. She was almost done by the time we got married. And I was, I had bounced around a few colleges. Um, but we got married early and, uh, life happens. And I, I decided to, go full time at the job I was working at while I was going to school. And so I, I walked away from school to work and I told myself over the last few years that that was like the good call, you know, mm-hmm. like let's make some money. And you know, I don't, I don't need college because I can just teach myself, which has its merits, but um, also like having, 